All right, this is the practice set for Saxon Math Course 3, Lesson 94. I'm just going to go through the basic steps for looking through these problems. If you need some more examples worked out, continue watching this video. Now, practice set, problem A says negative 3 is less than x, and x is less than negative 3. Another way of looking at this is x is greater than negative 3, x is less than 3. So we're going to go back down to 1, 2, 3, negative 3, and we're going to go up to 1, 2, 3. These are the two points in our problem. We've already isolated x. We don't need to do any arithmetic or algebra to solve for this. Now, looking at this, x is less than 3, x is greater than negative 3. With this, there are no equal twos. There are no equal twos. So they're both going to be open dots. Now, x is greater than negative 3. Greater than means this one's going to the right. This one is less than, it is going to the left. The space, this is written as one solid function, so this is an and problem. So where is it greater than negative 3 and less than 3? Well, it's in the space in between them. And that's practice set A. B says x is less than or equal to negative 3, or x is greater than or equal to positive 3. So again, we're dealing with negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, right here, and 1, 2, 3, right here. This time, however, we have this little bar underneath the inequality. That means it is equal to. We've got x is less than or equal to, x is greater than or equal to. Those or equal to's mean we need a closed dot. We can see in the problem it's an or problem, which means all we have to do is graph one side, graph the other, we're done. So x is less than negative 3. The numbers which are smaller than negative 3 are the numbers that are more negative. So we're going to the left. The numbers which are greater than 3 would be things like 4, 5, 6, and so on. So we're going to the right. All right, now moving on to practice set C. When we see them written in a line like this, it is an AND function. So we want to know what numbers are true when x is greater than 5 and less than or equal to 10. So looking on the left hand side, we have a less than. A less than does not have an equal to, so we put an open dot. Here we have a less than or equal to, so we're going to put a close dot because of that or equal to. Now, x is greater than 5. The numbers that are bigger than 5 are to the right. x is less than or equal to 10. The numbers that are less than 10 are to the left. The numbers which are both are the ones in between them. So we're going to continue this line. What this means is if I chose any number, any fraction, any decimal, any irrational number between 5 and 10, it would make this inequality true. Since it makes this inequality true, and because I don't want to have to put a million billion dots in between here, we just shade in the space, because otherwise we would be sitting here forever going, okay, 5.00000001, 5.00000002, and making all those dots, it would be too much time. Any number between 5 and 10, it makes our equation true, so we're going to shade that whole region in, meaning all of those numbers work. Now, x is less than 0, or x is greater than or equal to 5. Now, less than 0 is going to be an open dot on 0. Greater than or equal to 5 is going to be a closed dot on 5. It is an or function, so we need to do both. We have one, we have the other, they're both okay. If x is less than 0, it works. Less than 0 is to the left. So we're going to make our line over here. x is greater than or equal to 5. Greater than is to the right. 
So we're going to go to the right from 5. Now these would extend forever. It doesn't stop here at 8. It would go on, which is why we draw this arrow, because I could say that 20 is greater than 5. I could say 30, 40, 1000. All of these numbers are greater than 5, so we need to include them on our graph. We include them with the arrow. Now, practice set E is a pretty long word problem. It says, a college will cancel a lab class if less than 12 students enroll. No more than 30 students can enroll in one lab class. Write an inequality that shows the number of students, S, that can be in one lab class, and illustrate this on a number line. So, our two important numbers are 12 and 30. It says that if there are less than 12 students, then they'll cancel. That means our smallest number of students is 12. We need to have 12 students. 12 needs to be, well, we could have it equal to, we could have 12, or we could have something bigger than 12, or 12 would be less than the number of students. But we can't enroll more than 30, so the number of students has to be less than or equal to 30. Because we can enroll 30 students, and we can enroll less than students. Now, notice the way I've written this, this is an AND function. Now, I have a weird question. Usually, I would draw this by connecting the dots with two lines. I just said, though, that when we're doing that, we're showing all of the infinite decimal solutions that make the equation true. Can you have 0.5 of a person? Or 0.2? No. So we need to add a little bit more to this. And S and we could say is an integer just like this. Or if we remember our set notation we could write it out in set notation if we wanted to using the element symbol. So, we need to graph this. First off, we have our endpoints, 12 and 30. We're using greater than or equal to in both of these cases. Since we're using greater than or equal to, they're going to be closed dots. We have 10, 11, 12. Put a closed dot here. And 30, we're putting a closed dot there. Now here's the tricky part. Usually, we'd go, okay, greater than to the right, less than to the left, and we connect the dots. But this time we're told that s is an integer because we have to have only a dot where a possible class size is. And you can't have a class size with a decimal or a fraction. So we're going to put a dot at each integer every number between 12 and 30 is going to get a dot because it represents a possible class size. We could have a lab of 15 and 15 is greater than or equal to 12 and less than or equal to 30. We could have one of 22, 24, 27. Any of these places where I put a dot that is a number of students where they could have a class. So this is just one example of one of the ways they could throw a curveball at you with one of these problems. Try to make sure that you're being realistic with word problems having to do with inequalities. If it's something to do with people, you can't have a decimal of a person. So make sure that you're only including people as whole people when you are writing inequalities about students and things along those lines. All right, this has been the practice set for Lesson 94. Stay safe, wash your hands.